so last week I challenged you all to have a crack at modeling this Space Marine shoulder, and honestly, some of the results absolutely blew me away. It was awesome seeing the different approaches that you all took. Uh, but I wanted to go a little bit more in depth and break down the process of how to go about modeling this, as well as show a little bit more of a technical and possibly a little bit more of a roundabout way of tackling it. So I'll show you the first method here, which is the way most of you approached it, and uh, not unsurprisingly, because it is the simpler way of doing it. So if we just pull in a cube here and we subdivide it, I'm just going to subdivide this three times here. I, I feel that gives enough topology. Uh, I'm just going to apply that. Then tapping into edit mode, you can use Alt, Shift, and S to use the spherize uh, method. And you can see just as I pull it out to one, it just makes it more of a sphere as opposed to uh, more of a cuboid shape. From here, I just go ahead and cut away three quarters of the mesh. Let's get rid of those faces. And then you can literally just go ahead and scale along the Y axis to just bring it in. And then also on the X axis to bring that in as well. And I should probably also just note that uh, this works because the pivot point's in the middle. Uh, and it will also work if we had the 3D cursor. But we're actually going to want to use the 3D cursor for this next part is why I bring that up. Um, because if we go ahead and just select this bottom row of verts and we extrude with the 3D cursor at the center point there. We could also use the uh, origin point because it would still work here. I'm just doing this for good practice. And so just extrude this out. This will make that brim there for us. And I might just scale it in a little bit on the X, just like so. Then go ahead, select the outer one. It's going to go to a top-down view to try to help line this up. E to extrude and scale this out just until the outer vert matches up with these outer verts. And it's not going to be precise, but I'm just going to go ahead and merge these at last. Um, then I'll just go ahead and select all these bottom verts again. E to extrude, just pull this, whoa, <laughs> pull this down directly on the Z axes. And then just go ahead and do the same for the front here and just extrude and pull that forward. And then I'm just going to fill in just a little bit of the interior. I'm not too worried about it for this exercise. You know, when I eventually get around to doing the full armor tutorial, we'll, we'll cover it in detail there. Uh, so I'm just going to extrude these in a bit, scale it in, and then just scale in on the Y as well, just to make it sort of even. Um, and sorry, I, I probably didn't explain that well. I've just, I moved the uh, center point. Uh, well, the 3D cursor, because it was sitting here, I just selected between these two verts and went cursor to selected, just so that it would scale about the bottom here. And then I'll just go ahead, select all of these bottom verts, and with the 3D cursor in the same point, just going to extrude and scale in. Just eyeball it to get those verts to line up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and merge at center, because these are pretty close. And then the only other thing to do would be go ahead and select everything that needs to be a hard edge. So these ones here, Shift E 0.55, just to give some creasing. Smooth it all up, and I'm going to chuck a four times subdiv on all of this just to make it look nice. Cool. And even yet, I might just adjust the 3D cursor again. I might just adjust the position for, well, sorry, the scaling for this. Just kind of feel like it sticks out a bit much on the top. So I might just scale that down on the Z axes. And there you go. So that's the method that most of you used. And that's more than fair because I think that's you know, a much simpler method than what I'm about to show you. Um, but what I'm about to show you, I think it's valuable because it does teach you about shrink wraps and how they can be used with your shrink wrap meshes, uh, as well as a really handy tool that I've stumbled across recently, which is the Smooth Verts tool. Uh, and it's kind of magical in the way it just cleans up all of your topology. It's, it's pretty cool. So the way I'd approach doing this way is let's just go ahead and bring in a circle. And I'm just going to leave it at 32 verts. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in half. Delete those verts. It's going to shift D, R, X, and negative 90. And I'm just going to scale this up on the Z axis just to get more of that shape. And we could also scale it out a bit on the Y here if you want. I'm going to join these together and just go ahead and dissolve the overlapping verts. So just these ones in the corner. Then if we go ahead and we select the middle vert here, just come to a side orthographic view, fill them in with just a singular edge and subdivide. 
I'm just going to take my smoothness back down to zero because this is how it would look normally, right? What I'm going to do is, I've already, already given it away, but adjusting the smoothness gives us a bit of curvature to our subdivision here. And then we can increase the amount of cuts. So I'm going to bring it up to 7. And you can just adjust this to the shape you want. So like, you know, you could have it all the way at 1, have something that's very bulbous or somewhere in between. That's part of the reason why I like this method because I feel you get a little bit more customization in the shape as opposed to using the subdivided cube. So I'm just going to go somewhere around there. Uh, but to explain why I've used 7 verts on this subdivision here. So at the moment, a way of thinking about this shape is, if we just cut away half of it, just to make it easier to think about. If we think about this shape, it's effectively a triangle, right? Because we have, you know, one main point up here, another main point here, and here, right? So, you know, it can kind of be thought of as a triangle. And it makes sense to think about it as a triangle because if we go ahead and try to grid fill this, right, you're, it doesn't matter how many times you press all these buttons, uh, you're never going to find a method that looks nice. And the reason for that is because you're effectively trying to run a grid fill operation on a triangle. It doesn't have even distribution of vertices, right, to, to connect everything up with. So how could we think about this shape differently, right, to make it a quad, right? You'd, we'd need an extra, we'd need an extra edge somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in an edge here, right? So we can just ignore that vert. I'm just going to hide it. I haven't deleted it. It's still there. But now if we think about it, right, we've got one vert, two vert, three vert, four verts. So all of a sudden, we've changed this shape into effectively a quad, right? It's it's not yet, but we've got four main points of contact. So this shape could be considered a quad as opposed to before where, you know, we had more of a triangle, right? So just bear with me if, if this is a little bit going over your head. That's okay. I'm just going to show you how this improves the entire thing and makes it different. So I'm just going to select this quad, so to speak, in heavily inverted commas. Duplicate it, separate it by selection. And what we can do is I'm just going to go ahead and cut seven verts into here. And I'm cutting seven verts because you've got to think, right? So we've got seven verts down here. We've got six verts along here and six verts along here, right? So we've got two edges with six verts, so we know that they'll connect together. And we've got two edges with seven verts, so we know that they'll connect together. So if we go ahead and run the grid fill operation, you notice now, since we're working with a you know quad-based sort of shape or a, a square here, it fills nicely, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back. Um, I'm just going to go back to the original shape. I'm just going to cut seven verts into that edge. And the reason being is that the one with the faces, I'm just going to select uh, first and then select the other mesh, Control J to join them back together and then do a by distance to get rid of the overlapping vertices. And the reason I pulled that out to do the grid fill is for some reason grid fill doesn't always like it when you try to do it with the entire object. So if you just remove the area that you want to do the grid fill on, it seems to work better. I don't fully understand why. It just seems to be best practice. Um, and so yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get a mirror modifier and we'll just enable clipping. So what we can do here, which is really cool, is we can break all the rules that you know about topology and we can just fill a big end gone right there. Like that is horrific, right? Uh, but we're only going to do this for uh, this mesh here, right? Because this is going to become our shrink wrap mesh. I'm just going to call this shrink. And we're going to subdivide it. And I'm just going to bring this up to four. I'll just shade smooth. And so now we've got this. It still doesn't look good, does it? It looks horrific. What I want you to do is duplicate it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide the shrink model. And I'll just call this new model model just to differentiate them. Just go back to shade flat so we can see our topology better. Uh, and what I want you to do is I want you to add in a shrink wrap to this newly duplicated version of it and set the target to the shrink. Right? So you can see now that, that that's conforming to our shrink uh, wrap model. But what we can do now is let's just go clean up this end gone. So I'm just going to use K for the knife tool and then C to cut straight lines. So I'm just going to cut three lines up along the shape, so vertically, and then three lines going horizontally across the shape, here, here, and here. 
So now we've turned that big Ngon patch into quad-based topology, right? But still doesn't look nice. You know, that's that's not going to resolve nicely at all. But what we can do, and this this is going to really mess up the mesh, uh, but trust me, we're going to fix it. It's going to enable uh, the on cage effect here, so we can see our shrink wrap applied to our vert. And I'm just going to select. It's going to select what these first four uh, vertical uh, loops here, just before we reach the one that doesn't connect the whole way through. And just using loop tools, I'm just going to run a space operation. As I said, we're about to destroy this topology, so don't worry about that. It's all good. And then I'm just going to select the other three. Um, once again, just not selecting this edge here. So just these three and space. So you must think I'm absolutely crazy because how is this any better? This is horrific, right? It's terrible. It, all the quads are everywhere. It's, uh, I've ruined it. But watch this. this, this is awesome. This is the best part about it. So if we select the outer vert here and use Control i to invert the selection, using Control v there's this awesome little method called smooth vert. And it's already done it straight away for me here. Uh, but your repeat will be set to 1, so it will look like this. But if we bring that repeat all the way up to 100, all of a sudden we get this really nice evenly distributed topology with a nice pole right in the middle, as you'd expect. And it, I, I find it just absolutely amazing that it does this. Uh, and one thing I've neglected just on our shrink wrap mesh, notice how the corners are getting distorted. Uh, I'm just going to bring our shrink wrap mesh back in. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a crease level of 1 to the outer edges just so it remains sharp. And that's now reflected on, on this mesh. Um, but yeah, so if we go ahead and apply that shrink wrap like this, this looks fantastic, right? Like, consider where, where the topology was and, you know, the click of a button and it's all just magically done. Uh, there's the argument, you know, we've got this uh, sort of obvious bump in the middle. The way I'd go about resolving this is I'd just apply the mirror modifier, uh, select all of these horizontal loops here. So just around to there. Once again, stopping at the pole, and then I'm just going to select between these points. Oops. There. And I'm just going to do a relax operation just to smooth that out so we don't have as much of an obvious peak in the middle. And then I'll just skip over it because it's going to be the exact same method. But then you can just go ahead and, you know, use the same method for extruding out the brim detail. So, yeah, there you go. There's two different ways of approaching the same shape. And... Honestly, it comes down to personal preference. I think the, you know, subdivided cube, I think in terms of the roundness and the profile, the way the Space Marine uh, shoulder pads normally look, I think this might work better for more of that bulbous shape. It comes down to preference, ultimately. The reason I like the shrink wrap method is that it applies to more than just this use case. You can use it for other rounded objects. Say you're doing a visor that's got more of that rounded sort of shape or, you know, modeling a skull or something of the sorts. You could use that and, you know, make some really rough topology and then go in afterwards, use a really high level of subdivision and then shrink wrap everything back down and smooth everything out. And all of a sudden you've taken your, you know, really rough topology on a curved surface and you've cleaned it up into nice even quads. Just as a little added extra here, just because I did see other people take a approach somewhere along these lines. So let's say you wanted to change the process a bit and use a solidify here. I'm just going to apply the scale. Uh, and let's increase the thickness. So this this would be a much better way uh, to you know fill in the interior here. All right. So let's say we go along these lines, and you know let's go ahead apply that. I'm just going to turn off the shrink wrap for a second because it's just sort of distorting everything. So you know now we've got the interior filled. So that's you know much better than the way that I did it before. Uh, and then let's say instead of you know extruding the outer extremities here, let's say let's just go ahead and Cut in some more loops here. And let's say we go ahead and extrude and then use something like Alt S to bring out the edges. Now this is a totally valid way of doing it, right? You know, that, that also works. Um, but a problem that you'll run into, and it depends, depends how pedantic you are about these things, and this would certainly trip me up as well. If we look, well, first of all, if we look at the bottom, it's sort of caved in on itself, which is just a result of the shrink wrap. So I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, this vertice here, uh, set the origin to the 3D cursor for it, 
select everything, go my pivot to the 3D cursor, S, Z, 0. Just flatten out the bottom there, just make it look all nice. Um, but then on the side here, you'll notice, one, we get the similar, we get a similar sort of thing going along the top here, so I might just do the same for the top. I might just select that, set the 3D cursor to that vertice I selected, S, Z, 0. So just flatten that out. And we get a similar problem. I just noticed it's not really along the x-axis, but that's all right. Um, similar problem here, right? So this is skewed. It's going in, and that's because of the Alt-S operation, right? Um, you know, extruding along the normals. Uh, what we could do here, make it nice and simple, just select the, you know, apex uh, vertex there. I'm sorry, edge. And then we can go S, X, and 0. So scale it down to be 0. And then what we can do is just selecting between these points. So I'm not selecting beyond this edge here just up to that point and out to the extremities. We just go ahead, space these out, and do the same on the other side. Oops. Space those out. Um, and then we can also run a relax operation just for, for good measure. And now you'll notice, if I take it to the side, now it's all nice, straight and flush. Um, and it just helps correct that skewing that we have on the outside. So that's just another way to do it, as I believe uh, Sneery Sun over in the Discord server had used a method somewhat like this uh, and had just asked about how you would go about correcting uh, uh, the skewing on that edge there. So that's how you go about it.